What up guys, it is your big bold bad boy Jules here for WhatCulture.com here with another episode of the most insane things happening in wrestling this week. Now, as per usual, there is a lot to cover, so let's make like my testicles when I zip up my trousers too quickly and get bloody stuck in. Hit that intro. <laughs> Chris Jericho is going to be appearing at Wrestle Kingdom 12 next year. The news still sounds pretty foreign to my ears, but it is true. And it also marks New Japan Pro Wrestling as one of the most exciting, exciting promotions going at the moment. Exciting enough to turn Chris Jericho's I'm not going to work with anyone else since 1999 head. But it's an announcement that also reveals a little bit about what's going on with Chris Jericho and his career at the moment. It's showing that he's desperate for a challenge, for new pastures, for that world over critical acclaim that's kind of been lacking in his career, even as legendary as it is of late. And who better than the Meltzer rating machine that is Kenny Omega to help him achieve this? However, as proved by my hairline, hence why I'm wearing a hat, plus it's very cold, time is a cruel mistress. And while 10 years ago, Chris Jericho was one of the greatest wrestlers ever to step foot in the ring, the Lion Tamer is now looking a bit long in the tooth. Can this match go the required distance? Can he summon the strength required of Kenny Omega's very long and drawn out matches? Can he even match the style? Whatever the answer to this, I and many others the world over are very excited. Now, while WWE's market saturation might be challenged somewhat by this New Japan announcement, it certainly isn't being challenged by what the f is going on with Impact, because that is a f***ing skip fire. I covered this week in a news piece that Impact have started paying actors to fill out their crowns, at 50 bones a pop, no less. And I'm mused on the fact that this is a poor, poor long-term investment choice. And also, if they've got this amount of cash, hire better writers and hire better wrestlers, or at least pay them more, so they might want to show up and not have the shenanigans that went on this week at Bound for Glory. But let's actually talk about Bound for Glory and how it's their version of WrestleMania and how this year's version of the show was about as appealing as getting a dead-eyed hand job from Katie Hopkins, where she doesn't even let you finish. AKA not very. The event felt like a WWE knockoff in all the worst ways. There were botches aplenty, storylines that made no sense, and a crowd with less pops than my own childhood. There you go, that's your self-deprecation for the week. All right, Dad? The main event itself was also Danny f***ing dire, as perennial arsehole Alberto El Patron ran down into the ring straight from the airport and dished out domestics to Johnny Impact, costing him a title match. It was an unpleasant action from an unpleasant man and was about as appealing as watching your dog get run over by a steamroller with like its organs spilling out like some sort of horrible toothpaste. I hate the man. Quote me on that. ICW is not a place for the weak hearted. It is a promotion with a passion for pain, a vitriol for violence and uh, it's just a promotion which just has a lot of big fat lads and lasses just slapping the shit out of each other. It's good watching. It's one of the biggest cult promotions for a reason. And Mark Dallas has shaped the company well. So well, in fact, that on this week's Fight Club, none other than Hunter Hydrophobia Helmsley showed up, aka my dad, to praise the promotion. This is insane. Think back not even five years to the WWE stance on the indie scene. They wouldn't have even stepped foot inside another promotion's building, let alone praised them. Yet here we are. The PG standing side by side with the rated R. Mental. It also serves to remind you that Triple H didn't just get his moniker, the game, from boffin Stephanie. He sees the bigger picture. He knows that what is going to be an indie pop today might be a stadium eruption in a year or two's time. Clever boy. Although well, saying that, Hunter, Vince, if you're watching as well, could you not have put our boys over a little bit more in Manchester this week? I mean, Pete Dunne, Tyler Bates, they're pretty good wrestlers. And when his music came out, Pete Dunne's like, oh, brilliant, it's our boy. Why did Kurt Angle come out? No one wants to f***ing see him. Get Pete Dunne out. It doesn't need explaining. We're in the UK, we know who the champion is. Wasted potential, and he won through a distraction. And then Tyler Bates got eaten alive by Enzo. WWE, is this what you think of when you look at the UK? Silly boys. Well, well, well. Jinder Mahal, the Monday Maharaja, 
is no longer the WWE Champion. In his place, we have the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Am I happy about this? Yeah, I I'm pretty happy about this. Not as happy as Michael Sidgwick, though, who, as a direct quote uh, when speaking to Jinder, was, um, take that, you acne-armed, rest-holding botch factory. Yeah, that's what he said. And you know what? The match was actually really decent. I know I'm like, that sounds like I'm taking the piss about this, you know, in hindsight, criticizing him when he had the belt and then praising him as soon as he's lost it. But actually, it's more of a backhanded compliment to AJ Styles, proving once again that he can elevate anyone when they step inside that ring with him. So this means AJ versus Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series, and that does sound like a much more appealing match, if you ask me. And sure, Jinder might win the belt back on the India Tour, seeing as they're already promoting him as the two-time champion. And sure, this title switch might have been done to contrast stuff that's happening in New Japan with the Jericho Mega announcement, if you're being cynical. But at the same time, we have to accept that this is an insane thing, that a title change, that the big belt title change hasn't happened on like a pay-per-view in ages, not in the UK for even longer, and not even on SmackDown for even longer than that. Big times. Who isn't in love with the Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens show at the moment? I mean, these guys have been on the road together for years, wrestling in tons of different promotions. They know each other inside and out. So finally getting to see them be the best mates that they are in real life on screen is an absolute joy. Unfortunately, Vince McMahon does not share my passion for these two as he kicked them off the European tour. Eep. It turns out that they were meant to feed for the New Day, you know, just get beaten up by them to make them look strong for their match at Survivor Series. But they didn't. Instead, what they did was kind of like Tory funding for the NHS and withdrew quickly. SATA! Yes, Vince took personal offense to them walking out early and told them to pack their f***ing bags. Now, a lot of people are saying this is a work, but would the WWE really risk pissing off paying customers by having two big draws taken off the card? Probably not. Yet maybe it's the pair putting their foot down the only way they can. I mean, what with the Jericho Mega announcement and people like Neville leaving, it proves that the WWE's stranglehold isn't as tight as it tells its talent that it is. Has the walking on eggshells WWE environment started to crack in parallel to New Japan's sort of international conversation? The WWE has fostered this atmosphere, telling people that the only place to make the big bucks is to be on the grandest stage of them all. But that simply isn't true. There are other grand stages to go to now. And if other promotions can continue this boner-popping, fanny-melting seduction spree that they're going on, the WWE might have to do the thing it hates the most and actually start listening to their fans. <sighs> we can but dream, eh? And those were the most insane things happening in wrestling this week. Thank you very much for making it to the end of the video. And as per usual, I'll now read out my favorite comment from last week's episode. Jules is starting to grow on me. Too bad his hair won't grow on him. Fair one. Thank you very much for that spice. I can add it to my pumpkin latte because apparently I am fully hipster. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All that's left for me to say is big love to Michael Sidgwick and Phil Chambers for their continued work on this show. Why not drop me a comment down below, positive or negative, either way, make it funny, because it might be read out in next week's episode. Then go to Twitter, our official one, and just have a natter with me. Just get bored very easily, as you can tell. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. So, thanks for watching. Please feel free to click on any of these things around my head, or something terrible might happen to the dog. Too sweet me, bro. Traitor. <laughs> Traitor. <laughs> <laughs>